This commercial is generating roughly $10,000 per month for a local pest control company. And in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how we produced it to get these results. Everything from the script writing, storyboarding, filming, and editing, all of the major components that influence a commercial's selling power. Okay, so first off, here's the proof. This commercial exists on only one page of this business's website, and on that page we have a tracking phone number. So we know exactly how many calls per month this video is generating on behalf of the business. During the month of November 2019, you can see here the video generated 44 phone calls. Now, we know the average deal that this company makes on each phone call is between $150 and $250. This account for the calls that come in and don't book for any service and the multiple calls per month they get for apartment complexes or other big jobs that end up bringing in well over a thousand dollars. So these numbers alone account for roughly ten thousand dollars per month in income for this business from this one commercial. Now don't forget these customers that they get from the commercial they don't just buy once they come back time and time again which is known as lifetime customer value. So so not only do we get the immediate sale, but the commercial also helps this business generate lifetime customers, which is one of the most valuable assets any business can have. So as you can probably see by now, this commercial has been an awesome investment for this business. They paid about $4,000 to produce it, which was a really fair price because it wasn't a huge project by any means. I spent some time performing market research. Uh, I spent about two hours developing the messaging and actually scripting the commercial. The entire shoot took about four hours, and since I did a lot of the heavy lifting in the pre-production, it only took me about two hours to edit it. So at the end of the day, this was a win-win offer for both parties. They got an awesome commercial asset that generated a massive ROI in just one month, and I got paid well for a project that delivered great results for a client. Now, full disclosure, I manage the online marketing for this business, so on top of the commercial fee, they also pay me monthly to help manage their business's marketing plan. Again though, the beauty of this situation is that together we produced an awesome commercial. Once you have that, it makes marketing a whole lot easier. Now I'm not saying this is the best commercial ever and you should copy it word for word. What I am trying to get across is that we use some very fundamental commercial tactics and they absolutely paid off and there's no reason that you can't start implementing these same strategies in your next commercial. All right, so without any further ado, let's dive into this commercial and talk specifically about what we did to create a marketing machine for this business and how you can start doing it too. First and most importantly, I'm going to talk about the messaging because at the end of the day, this is really what makes a commercial profitable. How do we speak to potential customers in a way that raises their level of certainty to a point where they're ready to invest? I know as filmmakers and content creators, this isn't always what we want to hear. The visual techniques like lighting, composition, and how we actually use our gear are still very important, and I'll cover that in this video too. But what we found is a lot of filmmakers focus on the technical aspects of filming, and they kind of forget about commercial messaging, which is why this video is so important. Just remember, learning effective commercial messaging will help you so much in your career, allowing you to charge more and learn effective storytelling, which is always a useful skill as a content creator. So we can break this entire commercial down into eight primary messaging components, each building off one another to raise viewers' certainty to a point where they're ready to invest and they believe this is the best business. These components are attention getter, defining the gap, defining the cost of not bridging the gap, solution identification, social proof, results and benefits, visual support and strengthening, and finally the call to action. Now, if some of those sound unfamiliar, don't worry, I'll cover each of them throughout this video. Now, this is a common way to order these components, but they don't absolutely have to happen in this order. This is just a good example of the order I like to outline them. Also, these aren't the only components to feature in a commercial. Sometimes, given time constraints and other factors, you can't include everything, so you have to understand what's most important and will work best given the specific ideal client and target market that you're talking to in your commercial. So component number one, grab the audience's attention. 
you need to do something in the first five seconds that really grabs your audience and gets them to stick around for the rest of the commercial. In today's society, people are very quick to leave a video, keep scrolling, or just focus on something else entirely. So you need to do something at the very beginning of your video that will grab their attention and convince them that this video is worth watching. Now, one of my favorite ways to do this is by implementing component number two, which is defining the gap. This is basically just outlining the specific problem your product or service is aiming to solve. What's the gap between point A, where they are, and point B, where they want to be? So in the case of this pest control company, the problem this business's ideal clients are facing is a pest problem. By asking, do you have a pest problem, in the first line of the commercial, we're telling everyone watching exactly who we're speaking to, which gains their attention. If you're currently living in a house infested with pests, having someone ask you this question will grab your attention and get you to stick around for the rest of the commercial. After doing this, we show some pretty horrifying images of common house pests, further defining this gap and reinforcing how bad this problem can be. Now, some people might think I went a little overboard with these images, but personally, I like the shock and awe feature that these images provide. Always put yourself in the shoes of an ideal client, which, if you don't know, is the person most likely to invest in the offer. If you have a pest problem and you're looking to hire an exterminator, you would be an ideal client for this business. So someone with a pest problem, if they're seeing these images, it's only gonna make them want to get their problems fixed so much faster. Okay, component number three, define the cost of not bridging this gap. What is it costing you to not address your problems? Now, after talking with my client a lot, we both agreed the two worst outcomes of a pest problem left unfixed are extreme financial loss, like having to get your entire house fumigated when you could have solved the problem for a lot less earlier. Or problem number two, having members of your family get sick from a pest-borne disease. Whatever the pests may be, they have the potential to spread disease and cause serious damage to your home. You want to play off the major pain points and potential fears a person might be experiencing. By doing so, you help to get them certain of the fact that they need to address this problem right now or else it's going to get a lot worse. Now, component number four is solution identification. Now that we've fully outlined the problem and the cost of not addressing the problem, we've perfectly primed the audience to hit them with the solution that they've been waiting for. And in most commercial scenarios, the solution to the problem that you've been talking about is the business itself. So in this case, the solution to a raging pest problem is to hire a pest control business and say bon voyage to those annoying bugs, rats, bats, whatever you have crawling in your walls. So during this section, I position the business as the vehicle that will bridge that gap and get viewers from their current situation, which is undesirable, to their desired situation which is saying goodbye to their pests. We've been in business for over 40 years, helping our customers solve their pest problems once and for all. Just listen to a few of our satisfied customers. Marsha had been struggling for years in her home with ants. She called to help regain her peace of mind. And one year later, she still hasn't seen a single ant in her house. Or listen to David, who says the quality of our service shows just how much we care about each and every one of our customers. These are just a few of the hundreds of five-star reviews we have. Now, once you start talking about the business, it's best to start incorporating component number five, which is social proof, aka one of the most powerful tools you have to position a business as better than the competition and more worthy of the customer's money. Now, social proof is all about outlining the actual proof that this business does what they say they do. We outline here that they've been in business for over 40 years and then start sharing individual reviews they have, which mention some extremely desirable points. We then roll into the fact that this business has hundreds of five-star reviews all saying the same great things. Now, again, you have to be specific in what you're saying here. Don't just choose any old five-star review just because it says nice things. I probably read through 40 to 50 or so reviews and then decided on these two very specific ones to read out loud. 
The first is all about the transformation. A year later and I haven't seen a single pest in my house. At the end of the day, this is the transformation that all of their customers want. The second review talks about how clear it is that the business really cares about their customers. Now, who doesn't want to hear that from businesses that they're looking to hire? These are the two biggest things people want to see in a business. The fact that it actually delivers the results that they say they do and that they genuinely care about their customers. We always want to position the business we advertise for in this way. It helps build trust between the business and their potential customers. And at the end of the day, trust is one of the most powerful things we can build. Now, we've already done a great job solidifying just how awesome this business is, but it's time to keep going further, which brings us to component number six, which is the results and benefits. This is when the market research really comes into play. I talked to several homeowners, commercial property managers, people who have hired pest control businesses in the past, and most importantly, I tried to put myself in the shoes of someone who would hire an exterminator or a pest control business. I asked what their biggest concerns were, what they would want in a pest control business, and the answers were pretty straightforward. Easy to work with in schedule appointments, showing up on time, treatments that actually work, personalized solutions to their problems, and then a huge one was treatments that are safe for families and animals. I'll roll the video now and you can see how I quickly touch on all of these points. From hassle-free appointment scheduling to prompt and effective treatment, we are committed to providing the highest quality services to our customers. We offer personalized solutions for your problems, such as organic treatments that are safe for you, your family, and any pets you may have. Having been in the industry for so long, we've seen it all and we know how to fix it all. It's so important to actually do market research beforehand because you may not know exactly what people are looking for. Luckily enough, I've never had to actually hire an exterminator before. Hopefully I'm not jinxing myself right now. But what that means is I don't know exactly what people who need pest control are looking for outside of being cost effective. It makes so much sense, but I never would have thought to talk about the fact that their treatments are safe for animals. And that's something that almost everyone said. Because everyone said this, I made sure to get a shot of the dog and talk about how their treatments were safe for animals. The main takeaway here is to do some market research, ask people what they're looking for, and include it directly in the video. Answer common questions in the commercial, which will save the business time by not having to answer them down the road. Now, component number seven is the fun one for us video creators, and it's visual strengthening. This is our chance to showcase our skills as filmmakers and reinforce the content of our messaging with powerful visuals. So what do I mean by this? Well, for instance, rather than just talk about how the treatments are safe for pets, I went out and actually got a shot of a dog, which strengthens the messaging. This is true for the entire commercial. I could have just sat the business owner down and had him talk into the camera and call it a day. But instead, I tried to take every chance I had to get additional B-roll footage showcasing exactly what we were saying in the commercial. So visuals of the terrifying pests in the beginning, actually showing the reviews in a cool 3D style, the office manager picking up the phone and scheduling appointments, one shot of the trucks pulling up on time and being greeted by a happy customer. Videos of inspections, treatments being performed, all of these shots help reinforce what's being said in the commercial, increasing the selling power. Component seven doesn't just take place at one point in time in the commercial, it should take place throughout the entire commercial. The more we do this, the more trust we build and the more familiar the viewer becomes with the business as a whole. I even opted to film the interview portion of the commercial in the main office with the phone staff in the background. It looks dynamic and adds to the organic nature of the commercial. Like, hey, these are the actual people that you're gonna be talking to on the phone when you call. The easier we can make it for a viewer to truly visualize themselves working with the business, the more likely they're going to be to actually pick up the phone and call. Then finally, component number eight, yep, that's eight fingers, is to utilize an extremely specific call to action. Tell the viewer exactly what the next step is for them to invest in this offer. In this case, since I knew the commercial was going to be going on their website and the goal was to get phone calls, I simply had the owner say, give us a call today and let us give you the peace of mind that you deserve. 
Notice how I again throw in the overarching transformation, giving you back the peace of mind that you deserve. I always try and drive home the transformation as much as possible. This is what people really want. So say it as much as possible. Now going back, one thing I would change is I would literally throw the phone number up on the screen, but at the time of editing, I didn't actually have the tracking number, so I didn't put anything up on the screen. But whatever you're telling your viewer to do, you want to make it as easy as possible for them and give them no excuse to not know what to do. If you're talking about a button that they need to click, point to the button wherever it is, point to it. If you're talking about going to a website, throw the URL up on screen and maybe even show what the website looks like so they know what to expect. And there you have it. Those are the fundamental commercial messaging points I chose to leverage in this video to get my clients results. There are tons more you could use, but these are some of my favorite that I always try and use in some form or another. Now, if you'd like to learn more about shooting profitable commercial content for yourself and for your clients, go check out mrpaulxavier.com forward slash videos that sell review sessions, where we have a lot of content aiming to teach you more about just that. Now moving on, how did I film this commercial? Maybe you like the look, maybe you don't, but either way, just like the messaging used, I stuck to some very fundamental film strategies to film this commercial and achieve this look. First, the cameras. This was a two camera setup. The main camera looking directly at the subject is a Canon EOS R with a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens, which was slightly zoomed in at about 35 millimeters. The settings on that camera were as follows. Resolution of 1080p filming in C-Log, a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second since we want to double the frame rate, which was 24 frames per second. Aperture of 2.8 to allow the most light in and get a shallow depth of field in an ISO of 500. The second camera slightly off to the left of the EOS R is a Canon 1DX Mark II with a 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 lens filming with the following settings. 70 millimeter focal length in 4K and remember the 1DX Mark II has a 1.3 crop in 4K so this is really a 91 millimeter focal length. Shutter speed of 1 50th of a second, frame rate of 24 frames per second, and an ISO of 200. As far as the settings go, those are pretty standard for commercial scenarios. Now, as far as the lighting goes, I used a slightly modified three-point setup due to the space limitations we were faced with in the small office. Our main key light was in front, above, and to the left of the subject. This light was slightly harder than what I would have liked. Another diffusion panel would have been nice to soften it up a bit. Then I had another light working as the fill light in front, above, and to the right of the subject. Despite there still being a darker and a lighter side of the face, I would consider this setup to be broad lighting since for the most part, the entire subject is fully lit up. Then finally, the open window in the back of the scene acted as a modified backlight, which also helps to light up the background just enough where it's easy to see the office workers in the back. Now, image composition is a fun one here. So going into the commercial, I knew I was gonna use a lot of graphics like the reviews and other text pop-ups. So for the main angle, I had the subject off to the left, giving plenty of space to add large graphics and pop-up text on the right. I also placed the subject in between the two office workers in the back so that no one was overlapping, which would have cluttered the scene a lot and made it look more confusing. I tried to separate the subject from the background as much as possible given the space we had. This helps to draw our focus to the subject as much as possible as he's fully lit with the broad lighting and the background is slightly darker. The more we separate our subject from the background, the more we increase the depth of our scene, which almost always looks better as we have that nice blurred out background. We also spent some time trying to clean up the background as much as possible so there was no unnecessary clutter. Then for the tighter 1DX angle, we kept it simple and stuck to the rule of thirds, keeping him in the top left corner. I made sure he had looking space in front of him and a little headspace above him. One thing I would change though going back is swapping the key light in the fill light so that the broad side of his face, which is the side the camera is pointing at, was the shadow side and not the fully lit side. This is how I typically film, with the shadow side being the broad side, just because I like that look. But for some reason here, I opted to have the broad side be the bright side of his face. I don't know what I was thinking, to be honest, but I'm not really heartbroken. It really doesn't make that huge of a difference. Then for audio, I used two 
Zoom H1Ns paired with Rode Smart Labs. This is a super inexpensive and versatile setup that still records great audio. I had one under his shirt, like I'm doing right now to record this audio, and then I had another one screwed onto a tripod just outside of frame. I ended up using the audio from the lav mic under his shirt as I liked the way it sounded, but I always make sure to have two audio sources just in case that nightmare situation happens where one of your recording devices fails. Then finally, I had the EOS R mounted on a portable teleprompter, which I had loaded the script on, so the subject didn't need to memorize any lines. Now, with that being said, I had emailed the business owner the script several days before filming, and I also called him and ran through it with him multiple times on the phone prior to filming. The whole goal here is to have him not sound like a robot. And personally, I think he did a pretty good job Knowing that it was on a teleprompter, I can tell he's reading it, but overall I think he did a pretty good job, and I don't think the casual viewer will be thrown off by the fact that he's reading. At the end of the day though, it's super important to run your talent through the script multiple times before you film, because they're gonna fumble their words and you're gonna end up doing a lot more takes if they haven't ran through it just a couple of times. In this case, we probably filmed a total of five or six full takes of the interview scene, which I then took the best parts from and pieced them together together in the editing room. As far as the B-roll footage goes, I filmed everything on the EOS R mounted to the Ronin S motorized gimbal. Now, the important thing here is I planned all of these shots beforehand, so we already knew where we were gonna film these additional shots at the house, and we had somebody lined up to stand in as the happy customer. Then all of the graphics and text used throughout the video were made possible by Adobe After Effects, which is a super valuable tool for commercial filmmakers. If you haven't learned it, I would highly suggest looking into it. Hopefully, if you can take away just two things from this breakdown video, number one would be that messaging is king. If you want profitable commercial content, which all of your clients do, you need to focus on developing messaging that strikes people to their core and speaks directly to their problems and desires. Takeaway number two is pre-production. You can save yourself so much time and headaches on the back end if you put the time in on the front end and personally, I guarantee that your final products will be so much better. When I first started, I would literally get hired, show up on the agreed upon date, and then just film whatever the hell we could think of that day. I did make it work and we shot good commercials, but it is a dead giveaway that you're a rookie in the industry and you don't really know exactly what you should be doing when it comes to commercial shoots. This is probably why I could only justify charging $500 per project back then versus now charging a minimum of $2,000 per commercial on top of my monthly marketing fee, which typically starts at about $1,000 per month. So put in the time during pre-production and you will absolutely transform your business and the products that you create for yourself and for your clients. Now, if you're at the point in your career where you're looking to revolutionize the way you shoot profitable commercials for your clients and for your own business because you need marketing content too, I highly encourage you to look into our Videos That Sell Review Sessions program, where you get access to our crash course on commercial filmmaking, which covers all of the technical aspects of recording beautiful videos. Everything from lighting, what gear to get, composition, camera settings, all those goodies, you get access to it. You get access to our weekly commercial review sessions and our weekly Q&A calls where you can ask six and seven figure filmmakers any questions specific to you and your business. You get access to our monthly commercial contests where you learn to shoot marketing content for yourself and your video production agency, landing yourself clients and getting a return on investment from our program. If that sounds like something that would absolutely transform your business, make sure to click the link below and check it out for yourself. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video today and found it both valuable and educational. Let us know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you all next time.